Hi and welcome back to MRTV. This is the $700 MRTV low budget VR PC and with this computer you can use your Quest or your Rift S to play all the PC VR games that you want to play like Stormland on high graphic details or Asuka's Wrath or Lone Echo or the upcoming Half-Life Alex. In this video I showed you all the components and I showed you how amazingly this PC actually works. Now in this video I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step tutorial how you can build this PC even if you have never ever built a PC yourself. It is really easy and all of this goodness is coming up. Welcome back to MRTV. My name is Sebastian Ang and this channel it's all about virtual reality. So if you just got your Quest or your Rift S or your Valve Index or any other VR headset I believe that this channel is for you because I'm bringing you tutorials just like this one and I'm giving you unbiased and honest reviews. So if you're into that why don't you subscribe to this channel now and click on the bell button so you don't miss anything. Alright, so this is the follow-up video where I show you step-by-step -step how to build this PC and I'm telling you everyone can build this PC even if you have never built a PC by yourself. All the links to all the components you will find down in the description below and you'll find them for Amazon US and Amazon UK and if you buy these components through these links you're supporting this channel and you don't have to pay even one cent more than you would actually pay. So this would be amazing. Also you're showing me that you appreciate the work that I do and that you appreciate these kinds of tutorials. So if this works out well for me, if, it, if I can um, yeah, earn back the money that I paid for this one, I will definitely also give you more tutorials in the future like the mid-range VR PC or the high-end VR PC. So it would be amazing if you would get the components from these links down in the description below and also if you get exactly these components you will be able to follow this tutorial really step by step. But now let's get into it. Let's get this party started with the main board and important before you touch the main board or other computer components do ground yourself and you can do so by touching a metal object that's connected to the ground like for example a radiator. So this is really important ground yourself. All right, let's see what else is here. This metal blind, we'll need that later, but for this moment in time, put it back. Also important, the manual, because we're going to learn some important information from this manual later, so don't throw it away, we will need it. Now put the main boards on that piece of cardboard. That piece of cardboard came with packaging. And now let's have a look at the main board. So this is the socket for the CPU, very important. Left to it the main memory banks, two of them for this main board. Then this here is the space for the solid state drive, the SSD. And this is the PCI Express slot, the place where you're going to put your graphics card later. And that's it. So let's look at the CPU and install it. This is the AMD Ryzen 5 2600. If you want you can also go for the Ryzen 5 3600. That's up to you. All right, this here actually is the processor. This little small thing. This is what we're going to install onto the mainboard. And this here is the CPU fan, the cooler. And we're going to install it onto the CPU later. But first of all, let's now look at the processor and let's install it. So get it out and let's find out in which direction we got to put it in. This is of course really important and let me show you. So one of the corners is different. Let's get a closer look. So as you can tell here, the top right corner looks different as compared to the others. And the same for the socket. One of the corners looks different, the bottom right one, because you will see a triangle and in the other ones you will see a circle. So this one is different as well. Now you simply have to match those corners and then you will have the right direction. Let's do this. All right, you have to open this little clamp, I would call it, and now simply put the processor onto the socket and again match the special corners. Do it just like this 
and it should be really simple you simply lay it down there and that's everything now put the clamp back down and that's really it you finished with the processor now the cooling fan we're going to use the boxed one that came with the processor because we're not overclocking this device so that's totally fine so here four screws that you have to use and first of all unscrew the screws that are on the main board those around the cpu get it all off and now you can place the cooling fan on top of the cpu and very important this side to the right and well there's actually there's only once one direction is possible because if you put it the wrong way like i'm showing you right now then this amd sign is going to block the memory bank so there's really only one way that you can screw it on top of the cpu the great thing the thermal paste had already been applied to the cooling fan so you don't have to worry about that part all right simply screw the cooling fan onto the main board four screws and then you're done now you have to connect the cooling fan plug with the main board and it's very simple simply look for a cpu fan there there it is and simply plug the plug onto this connector here it is and <laughs> yes not yet but now success so now let's install the ram the random access memory and it's very simple we got two times eight gigabyte and we get two memory banks here so open the memory banks here like this on both sides here as well yeah i'm really showing you every single step <laughs> and put them in and you can only put them in into the correct direction if you try the other one you will find out that it doesn't work so simply put it in you have to use a bit of force just like this and that's it the other one the same thing now the solid state drive the ssd 480 gigabyte of course you can go for a bigger one but this should be all right so there's only one space where you can put it and that's exactly here so put it in and now you have to secure it with a screw now this screw this m2 screw looks like this you will find this in your main board box so this is something important that you have to find in your main board box and now with this screw you can screw the solid state drive onto your main board and i'm also showing you this because i'm really showing you every single step so that everyone everyone can build the 700 dollars mrtv low budget vr pc you're welcome all right next the graphics card the gpu the gdx 1660 super again this is a very new card and this is equivalent to a gdx 1070. unbox the whole thing and now we're going to install it onto the main board but before we do that we have to get rid of this protective plastic part here exactly this part simply get rid of it and then we can install it so getting rid of it now right so this graphics card we have to install it onto the pci express slot and we only have this one long one here and you have to open it as you've just seen and then you can put the graphics card onto that slot and it will fit perfectly what you can do you can lift the main board a bit here lift it a bit because the graphics card has this kind of long metal part there and it will, it's going to be easier if you lift the main board to install it and that's it now the power supply this is a thermal take 600 watt rgb and well you don't actually need 600 watts for this computer 500 watts would be fine but i went for it because probably you want to upgrade your graphics card in the future and then this will be better this button here is for the different rgb colors so yeah all right so let's have a look at the main board here we're going to plug something in here and here so two plugs here on the main board and then one plug that has to be connected to the graphics card here 
So what you need to do here from the power supply unit, find the three cables or the three plugs which fit here. And actually there's only three that will fit those three ports. So you'll be fine. And this is the second one. And for the third one, the one on the graphics card, there is actually one plug which consists of two parts and you have to hold these two parts together in order to make it fit the port on the graphics card. Just do it like this and plug the whole thing in. Once you're done with this, actually you already have a working computer, a computer that's not in the case, but it should work. So let's test this out. Connect the power cable and also connect a monitor with the graphics card. Now we have to turn on the computer, but we have one problem. We have not yet connected the on and off button with the main board. So we have to find a solution for that really soon. But before you do that, you have to turn on the power supply. So click on the button and turn it to one. So now we have a look into the manual to find out which pins are actually responsible for the power and we find JPF1. So we gotta find that on the main board and then we have to connect the two pins that are responsible for the power to turn on the main board. So here, this is JPF1 and we simply touch the pins with a screwdriver like this to turn on the computer. If everything is correct, now on your screen you will see something like this. And this means yes, success, everything works as intended. So now we can put the mainboard into the case, but before we do that, let's get rid of the PSU and of the GPU. So we can easily put it into the case and then later we're going to add the graphics card and the power supply again. But now get rid of it and now let's get out the case. So this is a really beautiful case. It's not the cheapest, but it's worth the money. So first of all, get rid of the screw here and then we can get access to the inner part of the case. So this is really simple. Just do as I do here and now we get access to the case. All right, next you can turn it around and find what's inside here. Later you're going to install the power supply here, but first get all the stuff out there. So these are the connections. Let's turn it out around again. Just want to show it to you. Let's get it out here from the side. These are actually the cables that will be used to connect the front USB and the on off button with the main board. Turn the whole thing around again and loosen these two screws here. And so we can also get access to the case from the other side. From this side, now you can easily get out this cardboard box here. And in this cardboard box, you will find some important things like, for example, screws. The screws that you will need to connect your main board with the case. So really important, get that cardboard box out and have a look what's inside. All right, now turn the case around again and find your main board box because we will need the blind, the blind that we saw in the beginning of this video. So now get it out and let me show it to you exactly this here and see in which direction you have to put it into the case. So just like this direction and now simply put it into the opening. Let me show you exactly how that works. So put it here and simply apply some pressure. This should be quite simple and you will hear it like this. And then it's fixed to the case. In the next step, we're going to put the main board into the case and we're going to tighten it to the case with the screws. So. This is the place where the main board goes. And really important, in the case, you will see some standoffs. And these standoffs are important. You don't directly put the main board to the case. These standoffs are important so that there is actually some distance between the case and the main board. And most standoffs are already there, but 
you need this one. See on the top right, there's one more of these standoffs that has to be put here into this space. So get those standoffs, get one of those standoffs from the cardboard box and put one of these standoffs exactly in that position here. All right, once you've done that, now you can place the main board into the case and simply find the six 32 screws also from the cardboard and now you can tighten the main board to the case using these 6-32 screws. This should be really easy to do since the main board should be exactly on top of these standoffs and then you're done with the main board. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to install the graphics card back to the main board and to do so first put it there and see what kind of blinds you have to get rid of here. These two blinds, let me show you that from the other side here. Now you got to loosen these screws and you have to slide this metal plate up in order to get access to those blinds. And also you have to unscrew these two screws. And now, as you can tell, you can get rid of these two blinds. All right, now we can put the graphics card back into the PCI Express slot, just like this. And apply some pressure now in this moment. And now, yes, now it is in place. And now you can fix it to the case simply by using these screws here again that you just got rid of and put them in now and your graphics card will be installed on the main board. Now on the other side again you have to put the metal plate down again to secure everything and tighten the screws again. All right, so now what we do next, we're going to install the power supply unit, the PSU. In order to do so, you have to turn over the computer again. I'm going to show you that very soon <laughs> now. So turn over the computer and this is the way that you put in the PSU. Important, the fan should be directed downwards. So this is a bit unfortunate because this RGB unit, the light is going to glow downwards and not into the case, but well, there's nothing we can do. Use four screws that you can also find in the cardboard box in order to yeah, tighten the PSU to the case. Now find the three cables from before and all the other cables. Now you can tighten them together in order to, yeah, to put them into this place here where it does not interfere with anything. And now we can take care of the three cables that we actually need. For the longest cable of these three cables, I directly put it here into the slot next to the PSU, just like that. And it will come out on the other side. That's really important. Then for the other two cables, I'm fixing them here and I'm using this nice cable management system. This makes it so nice and that's why I like this case so much because everything looks very in order and I like it. Yeah. So these two cables, you put them through here and it will come out on the other side. On the other side now, simply connect those three cables with the main board just exactly the same way like you connected them before when it was not in the case yet. Probably you can even make a nicer cable management and you can find better ways to do so, but this will definitely work. However, for sure, you can even make it look more beautiful. The other side of the case, you will find two more cables, two thin cables, and these cables are connected to the fans of the case. And I'm actually only using one of these cables. If you want to use both, you will need to buy some other accessory that I'm not going to show you here. So I'm simply using the longer of these thin cables and I'm connecting it to this here, to the sys fan pins. And actually this connector only has like three pins, but on the main board you'll find four pins but that's okay, simply connect the three pins and the fourth pin 
is not going to be connected. That is perfectly all right. You are nearly done now. The only thing left to do is connect the, the other cables from the case for the front USB with the main board, these ones. So this one connected here, this is for the audio. And this one is for the USB connected here. This one actually is USB 3.1 generation 2. This one, we don't have it on this main board, so we cannot connect it. And the last one you connected to JPF1. Let me show you that step by step. So again, this is for the USB connection, simply connect it. The other one, we cannot connect it, unfortunately, to this main board. And this is being connected to JPF1. This is for the on and off buttons. As you can tell, unfortunately, one of the front USB ports we're not going to use. We could use them if we had a better main board that would support USB 3.1 generation 2. All right, put it all back together. Very simple to do so and also on the other side. And then that's it. You have built your $700 MRTV low budget VR PC. Congratulations. And this is how it looks like. I think it looks really nice and I'm so happy because this can play back all of these amazing VR tiles. Now let's get to the software installation. You will need a Windows 10 installation USB stick. To do so, go to the website down in the description below and click on download tool. Getting a few things ready and now you have to choose something and you have to choose the second choice because you want to do some installation and you need installation media. Click on next. Here you can't do anything. Probably you will see something different from what I see here right now. And now you choose the first option here and now choose the drive where you put the USB stick. For sure you need to put an eight gigabyte USB stick first before you do all this. And now the Windows 10 media is being created. And of course you need to do this on another computer. So not on the computer that you just built because well, there's no operating system on it right now. All right, so your USB flash drive is ready. That is good news because we're going to use it right now. All right, turn on the power supply and connect your screen to the computer. And also this is my USB stick, very small one. And I also connected this keyboard here to my computer using another USB dongle here. Now use this finger to turn on the computer. And it doesn't work because I didn't connect the power to the computer. Oh my goodness. Now after I connected it, I try again and yes, yes. It does work. So it seems like you need to connect this whole thing to power in order for it to work. Makes sense. So at the PSU, you have this little button and you can click it in order to change the color of the RGB lights. I turn it to blue. All right, now put in that Windows 10 USB stick that you have just created and use any of the USB ports in the back. Yes. And then it says click any of the buttons and nothing happens here. So click on control alt delete to restart it. And then it's going to boot from that USB drive that you have just put into the computer. If this step doesn't work for you, you might have to change the boot sequence and boot from USB first. And to make that happen, you have to go into your BIOS or how it's now called UEFI and you can do so by clicking on delete when the computer starts up. But well, you will find further instructions in the internet and if you bought just exactly the same parts like me, then everything will work just as I show you here. In this video, I'm not going to walk you through the Windows 10 installation. I'm sure you will be able to do so by yourself. If not, there are lots of tutorials on YouTube. 
By the way, most likely you don't have a Windows 10 product key right now. That is all right. You can always add the product key later, up to 30 days later. Next, after you've installed Windows 10, you have to install the graphic card driver. And to do so, look for GeForce Experience Download, click on the link and click on the green button to download the GeForce Experience. The GeForce Experience has lots of useful tools for you and most importantly, it also has the graphic card drivers that you need in order to make your GDX 1660 Super work. Install everything and afterwards we now need to install the chipset drivers. Look for MSI chipset, click on the download link and now you have to choose your products. And for your product we're going to look for the main board that we have bought. So simply look for main boards and look for chipset and now look for AMD B450. Yeah, let's find it. Here it is. And now choose exactly the main board that you bought. For us, it's the M2 Pro Max. Oh, this one here. Yeah, exactly this one here. And click on search. And now click on drivers because we need the drivers here. this one and now you can select what you need and it's the Windows 10 64 and now click on the chipset and here click on the symbol to download the drivers except and in the zip file that is going to be downloaded you will find a setup.exe and this is the this is the file that you have to start also go for the audio drivers now while we're here on the website right and the same thing here in the zip file you're going to find a setup.exe and you can use it and that's everything you need to do your MRT VPC is ready as you've seen, it's really not complicated to build this $700 MRTV low budget VR PC. So don't hesitate. Go and get the components and build this computer so that you can play Stormland, Asgard's Wrath, Lone Echo and Half-Life Alex next year. If you have any more questions, why don't you ask those questions down in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to answer those questions and well, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, why don't you do so now and click on the bell button so you don't miss anything. And if you enjoyed this tutorial and if it was helpful for you, why don't you give it a thumbs up. That's everything that I got for this video and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode.